Thanks for tuning into this episode of the Human Performance Outliers podcast with Zach Bitter. All right, folks, uh, I am going to do a, I guess I can see multi-day experiment, review, end of one, whatever you want to call it, on a topic that I've kind of been getting a little more interested in lately, which is exogenous ketones. So a couple things, I think exogenous ketones, we're starting to see multiple brands enter the market and a lot of brands actually include it within products that they're making. And to my knowledge, the research here is limited in the sense that it's still in its infancy. We've seen more promise along the recovery side of things than we have any type of intra-workout competition performance enhancement from exogenous ketones. Uh, Like I said, we probably know a lot less than we do know. So whether it ends up becoming something that is a a usable thing for intra-workout type stuff, uh, we'll we'll find that out over time. Uh, I have been very fortunate. Some of my guests on Human Performance Outliers podcast have either been researchers or closely linked to exogenous ketones in a way that they can kind of share some information. Uh, Probably the most notable one would have been episode 202 I had uh, Dr. Brianna Stubbs come on and, uh, she's really in the weeds when it comes to ketones, exogenous ketone supplementation and that sort of thing. So it was kind of cool to hear her take in it. And, uh, it may be time to have another one on now that's, that's been, I think over a year since, since I spoke with her and maybe get a lay of like what's changed since then. Uh, but for this experiment, I have been actually getting, uh, some samples sent to me. So, you know, I'm an, an endurance athlete. I follow a low carbohydrate diet. So I'm probably a a good candidate for some of these companies to reach out to and and send samples to uh, for that type of stuff. And uh, I'm going to go through some of them that I've got. So over the last few months, I've had three different companies send me some samples. Uh, Just a, a disclaimer, I'm not affiliated with any of these companies other than the fact that they sent me some of their product samples for free. Uh, I don't have any like actual like contract base of connection to them. So uh, whichever one works, doesn't work, works better, worse, however you, we end up interpreting that uh, is, is just kind of based on, on what we're going to find out on the specific parameters of, of my end of one experiment here. But the three companies that we have here is HVNN's Ketone 2.0. So they're kind of an early player in this market. Uh, they may have been one of the first exogenous ketones. I think there's maybe some other brands out there uh, I'm not sure if they made it to market or not, or rebranded over the years and things like that. But I know HVMN has been kind of in the, the exogenous ketone game for, for a fair bit relative to some of the other companies that I've seen pop up. Uh, next is a company called uh, Ketone Clarity, and they make a product called Coating Water. And then finally, Ketone Aid. Uh, so a couple things about this. These ketone supplements are all kind of in their own unique category in the sense that they define a serving as, you know, whatever their formula consists of. So we do need to kind of tease that out a little bit. What I'm going to do is I'm going to stick to a serving of each one, however they define it. I'm going to list the ingredients and the quantities of what they put in that. And then we're going to look at the price per serving as well. So what I want to hopefully do is through this testing, show how these products or each of them impact my breath ketones over the course of three hours, and then share with you things like the ingredients, uh, the formulation, the price per serving, and then let you kind of determine if any of them work better or work for you in a specific way that you're looking for and hopefully give you some, shed some light on some of that. So I'm sticking to one serving. I'm going to list everything in it, including price per serving. And the three hour interval that I'm going to do is going to be by 15 minutes post consumption, one hour, two hour, three hour. I'm going to try to standardize it as much as possible by doing each test at the beginning of the day on separate days. So there's a washout period. And I'm going to be consistent with what I have before and during those intervals. So what I'm gonna do is I'll wake up in the morning, I'm gonna have a cup of coffee, I'll mix in some elements, mint chocolate with that, and then I'm gonna wait about an hour, then I'll take 
uh, this Biosense. Uh, it's just a breath ketone analyzer and get my baseline for that day. And then from that baseline, I will take a serving of one of these three exogenous ketone supplements and test on a 15 minute interval, one hour interval, two hour interval, and three hour interval. During that interval, I'm gonna eat nothing. I'll drink water to thirst, uh, but nothing else. So what I'm hoping to do there is get a little bit of a glimpse into like, what's the initial impact uh, after like 15 minutes. So like, what is it gonna do in terms of elevating my breath ketones? And then also kind of what's its staying power? How long do these products kind of remain in your system or keep those ketones elevated? Because I think these are things people would be curious about. Like, for example, if somebody wants to get an immediate spike and one of these models does that, but then like dips back down to kind of baseline an hour later, that would have low staying power, but high initial impact versus one that maybe doesn't quite have as much of a big initial bump, but keeps you kind of up there elevated for a longer period of time. And these are all things I think people are probably curious about in terms of which product they would maybe lean to. And then, like I said, obviously uh, these products typically aren't that cheap. So like, what's the price per serving and how does that serving impact my, my day, my experience and the usability of that, of that product. So we're going to go over all that stuff. Uh, this video won't have the results in the testing yet. This is kind of a primer where I'm laying it all out there. And then I'll come back in a few days with the second video that highlights the results as well as a bit of a recap of what we've talked about here today. Uh, but the first one, uh, ketone 2.0 by HVMN, that one serving. So I guess the unique thing about this one is they, they send you this bottle and this bottle actually has 10 servings in it. So you have this little cap up here and you're going to pour it into that cap and take that serving. And essentially you'd have 10 of those in one bottle versus these other two that I got, which are just kind of single serving bottles and you just take, take the whole bottle. Uh, but ketone 2.0 has 70 calories per serving. It's in 1.2 fluid ounces or 35 milliliters. It has 10 grams of ketone IQ R-1 comma three butanid oil. The ingredients are water, less than 2% of monk fruit extract, natural flavor, rabidoicide M, citric acid, potassium sorbate, and potassium benzoate. The directions for this one is each 35 millimeter serving that contains that 10 grams of ketone IQ should take one to three of these servings daily, drink alone, or mix into your beverage of choice, refrigerate after opening. The price for this particular product is if you order a three bottle pack, so three of these guys, uh, it's $120. So that would be 10 servings per bottle or 30 total servings, which comes out to $4 per serving for the Ketone 2.0. Next is the coating water. It's this one right here. Uh, one serving of this comes in at 143 calories and has 15 grams of DBHB. The ingredients are water, D-beta hydroxybutyric acid, natural flavors. Their directions are to dilute this in 10 times the amount of the serving of chilled water. So essentially one part this, 10 parts water, chilled is recommended and mix and uh, enjoy. So that is their kind of directions with that. Uh, the coating water contains natural d beta hydroxybutyrate with no ketone salt or synthetic ketone esters. Uh, the price of this one is for eight of these single servings. You pay $89.95, which comes out to $11.24 per serving. So that's kind of one of the interesting things that I mentioned before is we'll take a look at kind of like what's its impact over the course of that three hour interval and how does that compare price point wise? So this one is quite a bit more expensive per serving. We'll see what it does in terms of uh, breath ketone elevation, staying power and all that sort of stuff compared to the cheaper per serving version of ketone 2.0. And then finally, ketone aid. One serving is 26 calories. So this one comes in at the least amount of actual energy added to your, your uh, consumption of this product. 5.5 grams of bio beta hydroxybutyrate in a two ounce or 60 milliliter serving. The ingredients are distilled water, 
ketone A bio BHB D BHB ketone ester uh, D beta hydroxybutyrate um, D by D BHB ketone salt free acid. So kind of the breakdown, 50% D ketone esters or three grams, 25% D BHB ketone free acid, salt, 2.5 grams. They listed their, their, some of their electrolytes too. So their sodium is 179 milligrams, potassium is 50 milligrams, magnesium, 30 milligrams, calcium, 20 milligrams. And they note that uh, it is 85% less total salt versus most ketone salts. So that is one thing to note, like ketone salts are like, have a ton of sodium in them. So a lot of these brands have been looking at ways to like make that maybe less of a bolus of, uh, of sodium since it's, you know, some of it, yeah, I've seen some products where, you know, it's adding like upwards to a gram of sodium per serving in, in when they add that, when they add those ketone salts to, uh, to a product. So uh, some people may be a little more sensitive to that sort of thing and maybe want to take note of that. Uh, when they're deciding to use these sort of products. Uh, ironically enough, or interestingly enough, the low carb community, the ketogenic community tends to lean a little more heavy towards salts and things like that. Uh, partly just because when you look at how the body kind of responds to water retention or blood volume levels, you do see the body kind of excrete more electrolytes when you're reducing the carbohydrates. And part of that is just because a carbohydrate ties itself to water. So you reduce carbohydrate or eliminate carbohydrate. In some cases, you're losing kind of one of those vehicles that would attach itself to, to water and potentially keep you hydrated and your blood volume high. So sometimes things like sodium, which also do that are used a little more heavily within the context of a low carbohydrate ketogenic diet. So some folks may say, Hey, cool. If I take that and get a ton of extra sodium along for the ride, great. Uh, it's probably gonna be an individual question when you're gonna want to consider with your own health and uh, and, and goals with that. Uh, anyway, directions for the ketone aids are take on an empty stomach with one bottle. Sensitive people should take half. Do not consume more than six bottles per day. I, I feel like six of anything per day is getting up towards the ceiling in most cases, but it's good. They're probably keeping track of that stuff. So people aren't just guzzling these things, uh, haphazardly. Um, Price for this one is uh, for a six pack of these, these little guys here, you'll pay $45 and 95 cents per six pack, six pack of bottles, which comes up to $7 and 66 cents per serving. So there you have it. Those are the three I'm going to test. Like I mentioned, I'm going to try to be as strict as possible with how I introduce them. So I don't have too many things impacting the results there. And the way I'll do that is I'll leverage the overnight fast from the day before I'll actually probably even keep my, 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 my nutrition quite consistent over those days, uh, in order to kind of try to normalize a baseline reading. Because one thing I did think about was like, how do you really like tease out if say I have like low ketone bodies one morning at baseline and high the next or something like that? Uh, you know, how much does that impact the, the actual results? So my hope is, and we'll find out with the results, I guess, as we go through this, that I can kind of have a fairly consistent uh, breath ketone level at the start. And uh, then when I do introduce the product, we'll have like kind of a similar starting point. But I think either way, we're going to learn some stuff about it in terms of how much it impacts that, uh, how long it lasts and, and, and the like. But within the consistent eating patterns for those few days, the other thing I'm going to do, like I mentioned, is leverage the overnight fast eat nothing other than have a cup of coffee with elements, mint chocolate, uh, electrolytes. One hour later, I'll test the baseline with the biosense reader, pick one of these, take a single serving, measure breath ketone levels at the 15 minute, one hour, two hour, three hour interval, go about my day. Next day, rinse and repeat with the next one, do this three times. And then I'll record another video kind of highlighting this stuff that we shared today, as well as the results. So uh, hopefully this will be informative for folks and give you a little bit of insight as to what some of these exogenous ketones are actually doing on the readings. And then I guess it's up to the researchers and ourselves to kind of figure out if there's any application for them outside of just what they do to our breath and uh, blood ketone levels. All right, folks, thanks for tuning in. 
If you like the Human Performance Outliers podcast and this YouTube channel, please like, share, subscribe, help us grow. If you like audio versions of the show, we're available. I'm available on all podcast platforms. All the details to each individual episode can be found at zachbetter.com forward slash HPO. So thanks for tuning in and I'll see you in a few days with some results. Thanks for tuning into this episode of the Human Performance Outliers podcast with Zach Bitter. 